What is up YouTube? IDM here and welcome back to another video. I got the 8-bit though SN30 Pro and I wanted to do a video on it because I am super excited about this controller. So I'm going to do a quick unboxing, a run around of the controller, what it all does, and then connect it up to my iPad and play some retro games with it. Now I want to clarify um, that I already have controllers. And the main reason I got this controller is because I've been playing a ton of retro games on my iPad, my iPhone, and on my Mac lately. So I wanted a controller that would be specifically good for platformer style games. Uh, games like Mario or Donkey Kong Country, you know, games, basically platformers. Now. I've already used this controller, so this isn't my first impressions or anything like that. I've already used this uh, for a little while, and I am absolutely amazed by this controller. But like I said, I just want to clarify that if you're trying to decide to get this controller, what you're going to play with it is going to decide. Because in my opinion, if you're looking for a controller that's good at like you know, action-based games like Call of Duty Mobile and, you know, stuff like that on the iPad, I would recommend probably, you know, a console controller like the PlayStation controller or even, you know, the Xbox controller. I think that they have a one-up on this controller because it's just a bigger controller, so you have more control over your movement with the thumbsticks. This controller does have thumbsticks, but it's a little bit harder to use in my opinion because you don't have the ability to grip the controller like you can with a console controller. Now if you're like me and you're looking for a controller to play old platformer games through like RetroArch or Delta or you know uh, PSP games with PPSSPP or something like that or any basically controller supported platformer game from the App Store this controller is absolutely awesome and I cannot recommend it enough. So let's jump into the box and let's take a look at it and let's pair it up and let's try it out. So very much retro vibes with the box. We have this really cool old gray. I mean, it's just gray, but it just, I don't know. It reminds me of Super Nintendo and, and I love it. I love, I love the colors. And here's the controller. It has a little protector plastic piece to protect it during shipping, I'm assuming. And then... We're presented with the controller of course in the box you have a manual and then you have a usb c charging cable and that's all that's in the box now taking a look at the controller the the color that i went with is the kind of super nintendo look there are other color options there's like a re regular nintendo kind of color wave and a color uh, a couple other color options and uh this is just the one i went with uh super nintendo i think was probably one of my favorite consoles at least retro consoles so i went with super nintendo so we're just going to do a really quick run around of the controller so of course you have your d-pad in the upper left and i'm just going to say this right now because i don't want to mention every button individually every single button feels amazing the thumbsticks feel absolutely amazing in my opinion these these uh, analog thumbsticks are better than a ps4 by far they're just so much better so they, they feel absolutely perfect the price of the controller i think is a little steep but you really get what your money pays for this i was a little nervous to get it because it is about 45 dollars i think on amazon right now um and i was a little nervous for that price point because it's you know it's a simple platformer controller and it's the price of a ps4 controller so it kind of you know that it, it really if you're going to get this, you're getting it for platformer games. I'm just going to say that. You're not getting it for first-person shooters or any crazy other games like that. So, platformers. But anyways, we got the D-pad. We got the two thumbsticks. We have select and start, which feel amazing. Uh, the start button is actually also the power button. So, to power up the controller, you hold start. To power off the controller, you hold start. You have your normal A, B, Y, X buttons. And then there's two more buttons on the front of the controller as well. There is a home button on the lower right, and there is a star button on the lower left. From what I understand, the star button can be programmed as a turbo button. For those of you that are really into those retro games. Uh, going to the top, we have the L1, R1, 
and L2, R2. The L2 and R2 are just a simple button click. They are not pressure sensitive. So again, they're not like an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller. They're not pressure sensitive. You just click the button and that's pretty much how it works. You also do have the USB-C port to charge it. You have a pair button. You have a power indicator. On the bottom, you have LEDs. It looks like I powered it up. So you do have indicator LEDs on the bottom that really remind me of the PS3 controller because they are square LEDs and there are four of them. Also, I didn't, I'm not sure if I mentioned the thumbsticks are also L3 and R3. So you could use this to play PlayStation games if you wanted to because you do have those buttons there. So you have the full array of all buttons that a normal console would have. And then on the back, super simple, looks just like an old Super Nintendo controller, smooth back. You have a little sticker back here that says 8-bit dough. And then it lets you know what button combos to press to pair it with different devices. You can pair it with iOS, you can pair it with Mac. You can, I think you could basically pair this to anything. You can pair it to a Nintendo Switch. It's pretty cool. And that's pretty much everything on the controller. Now let's pair it up to the iPad because I found this to be very confusing the first time I did it. So it is actually in pair mode. So I'm just going to hold the start button until it powers off. So there you go, it's no longer trying to pair. We're gonna go into settings and then we're just gonna go right into Bluetooth where I'm already at. And to pair it with iOS or Mac OS, you hold the A button and then you turn it on with start. And then you notice the LEDs begin to flash. Now it already showed up for me. It won't do this probably the first time you try to do it. So what you want to do is when it's flashing on the bottom like this, hold the pair button, and then you will notice that the flashing is now different. The LEDs, instead of blinking, are going back and forth, and that means it's in pairing mode. Also, another thing that was very, very confusing to me the first time I tried to pair this to my iPad is that it does not show as 8-bit though SN30 Pro. It actually shows up as DualShock 4 wireless controller. This confused the living crap out of me because I had my PlayStation 4 controller uh, next to my iPad and I couldn't figure out why it was trying to pair with a controller that was turned off and why it showed two of them. But for some reason, I don't know if it's the way the Bluetooth works in the controller, but it will show up, at least it did for me, as a DualShock 4 wireless controller the first time you try to pair it. So we're just going to click on it and it should pair up just fine. And sometimes Bluetooth and iOS can just be really wonky. So hopefully it connects here. So I'm just going to hold these buttons again and hopefully it pairs up. There it goes. And it's pretty cool. There is a rumble pack in this controller. So I did get a kind of a rumble there when it connected to my iPad. I thought that that was really cool. And we're all paired up, ready to go. And if you didn't know, you can go and click the little I of the controller, and then you can change the name just like I did here. So it doesn't say DualShock 4. You can rename it to 8-Bit Doe SN30 Pro so that when you're in your Bluetooth, you know if it's the correct controller if you have one like me. And that's pretty much it. And now, like I said, I did not get this for, you know, too many App Store games. So controller-supported games from the App Store, I mainly got or I mainly have an Xbox or a PlayStation 4 controller to play, like Call of Duty Mobile, but I did get this to play retro games. So we're gonna launch RetroArch. If you guys have never seen this application, I did do a recent full guide on it, link in the description, and we're gonna load up a platformer, and one of my favorites is Donkey Kong Country. And I'm just gonna say, this controller is absolutely perfect if these are the type of games you're looking to play on your iPad, your iPhone, your Mac, your Windows computer, your Nintendo Switch, whatever it might be, if you're looking to play platformers, this controller is perfect. It is worth every penny. I can guarantee you will not be disappointed in the build quality, the feel, the way the buttons press, I mean, I've even played it, I've called it a mobile with this controller, and it's it's really not that bad. It actually works pretty good, but like I said, console controllers just have a one-up on games like that. But for platformers, you, you can't beat this. This is so much better than using um, a PlayStation controller 
if you want the nostalgic feel, if you want the nostalgic look, this is the controller to use. And like I said, if you guys are curious about RetroArch, I did do a, uh, a recent video on this application and it works amazing on iOS 15. It is so much fun to play these old games. Whoa, 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 whoa. With an actual modern retro controller. That's pretty much what it is. It's a modern retro controller. Bluetooth capabilities. Absolutely love this controller. Anytime you guys see me playing any old school games on my second channel, I'm probably going to be using this controller from here on out. Absolutely love it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped you decide whether you want to pick up the SN30 Pro. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, throw a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot here at the channel. And if you guys want to see more videos like this in the future, don't forget to click that subscribe button. This has been IDM, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later.